The Minolta CLE is a 35mm rangefinder camera that was made from 1980 to 1985. It came with three lenses for the system, a 28mm f2.8, a 40mm f2 and a 90mm f4. It has frame lines for 28, 40 and 90mm and uses the Leica M mount for its lenses. It has a 0.58 magnification finder and has aperture priority mode with plus two and minus two stops of compensation and uses through the lens metering. It has shutter speeds ranging from one one thousandth of a second all the way down to one second and bulb. It has an ISO range of 25 to 1600. It has a self timer mode and allows for use of a shutter release cable. The Minolta CLE also has a hot shoe and has a Minolta Auto CLE flash for the system, this flash is TTL Auto and has sync speeds of up to 1 60th of a second. In 1971, Leica worked with Minolta to release the Leica CL. It was a Leica designed camera made by Minolta. Um, this manufacturing by Minolta allowed them to sell it for cheaper and as a result, it started to cannibalize a lot of sales of the Leica M5 as it was a small rangefinder camera which allowed you to mount and mount glass and for a lot of people that was more than enough. After a few years, Leica decided to scrap this project as it was just too popular and started to slow down the sales of the M5. In 1980, Leica decided to work with Minolta again, this time to make the Minolta CLE. Leica wanted its partnership to be a little bit more silent so that not having their name on there would stop the cannibalization of their cameras, and it worked. The Minolta CLE was popular, but it probably wasn't as popular as it should have been, considering it was pretty much the same as the Leica CL just with a few improvements. So this made for a really nice camera, which was affordable, small, had some automation, and could mount and mount glass. As well as this, with the camera, Leica worked to design the glass. So the 28 mm, the 40 mm, and the 90 mm are all Leica um, designed um, lenses, but they're just manufactured by Minolta and they have the Minolta name on them. So the Minolta CLE comes in at a really good uh, price to quality range. It's um, a bit cheaper than a lot of other interchangeable lens rangefinders. Um, and also if you want something with 28 mm uh, frame lines, it's one of the few affordable options. Not many cameras have it. So for the Voigtlander Besses, if you go for an R2, which has 35 millimeter frame lines, um, when I was looking at prices in Australian dollars, it was looking around um, 1500 for the body alone. Um, that was on eBay sold auctions, so it might be cheaper if you're buying from someone in a Facebook group or something like that. Um, whereas the CLE came in at $1,400 with the 40mm F2, and this is a really mint, like really nice quality um, copy that I got. If you're looking for the R3, the R3 only has the 40mm frame lines at the widest, and then if you want 28mm, the R4, which is the really what modern um, Bessa, which has something like 21, 25, or 24, then 28, and heaps of frame lines. It's really modern and really nice. Um, that was looking around $2,700 when I was looking, so not too much cheaper than a Leica M6. Um, when I was looking at this, the Leica M6 was 3,300 to three and a half grand. So this sort of comes in at a good spot where it's, it's a quality camera with M mount, it's interchangeable lenses, it looks nice, it's small, but it's still affordable. I think it's sort of like one of the hidden gems of rangefinder cameras. Um, the lens options that you have, they're really nice. This 40 millimeter F2, which came with it, is absolutely tiny. This thing is beautiful. It makes for a really small package camera, which fits straight in your bag, or if you just want to sling it over your shoulder, it's really good to carry around all day and use. Um, the lens is nice. It has a pretty heavy vignette at um, F2. It's not too crazy, but you know, it's just something that I noticed. Um, but as you stop it down, it becomes really nice. Um, but the build quality, it feels really nice. It feels like a great lens. The aperture is really nice to move. It feels a lot better than the um, Voigtlander lens that I have with me as well. Um, and feels worlds above a lot of my SLR lenses. So for the 28 millimeter, I have the Voigtlander Ultron, which is a really nice um, affordable lens. It only cost me $400 on eBay, which is pretty good. Um, fits nice with the camera. It's a little bit longer, um, so it does come into the bottom corner of the viewfinder. It doesn't really bother me that much. It doesn't really block out. It's only the tiniest little corner. Um, but if you had something bigger, if you went for, say, a 7 Artisans, um, the 20mm 1.4, or you went for um, maybe like a Zeiss or something a little bit bigger, 
or if you went for bigger with the 40 mils, um, they might start to creep into the viewfinder. Um, because it's not the longest top, it doesn't have a huge base length uh, for the rangefinder, so it's not as long of a base length for um, as like a Leica or a Besser. Um, so it won't be as precise when focusing, but I found it to be pretty good. It's an improvement on the CL, the Leica CL was even shorter again. Um, but overall for me, when I shoot 35 mil, I just want something sort of small, light, easy to use. I can just put in my bag and bring with me um, and just be portable. And this ticks all the boxes. Um, a couple of things to note, the light meter in this only works when you're in um, aperture priority mode, but you can just put it to uh, plus or the um, compensation and it works. So for me, a lot of the times I'll swing it around to the um, plus one compensation to get my reading. Um, if I'm using color negative, because that's sort of how I like to, I like to be a bit overexposed. Um, but the annoying thing is if you go to the actual aperture priority right in the middle, it will lock and you have to press this little button down and move it, which is why I go to plus one, because then I can get my reading and then not have to press the button and go back. Or you can go to minus one, which is really close to the one one thousandth or something, and you can just work it out in your head. Um, it's pretty simple. So that's probably one of the only real drawbacks to this. So when buying this camera and the lenses, there are a few things to look out for. Um, firstly, with the 40 millimeter lens, um, with the Minolta M Rokor versions, there were two versions made. The first version was a single coated um, lens and the second uh, version was a multi-coated. So the coatings are the only difference. Um, makes a little difference with things like um, chromatic aberration and uh, how it handles flares and other bits and pieces like that. Um, so what you want to look for, if it has the serial number here on the front face of the lens, it is one of the single coated versions. Um, if it has the serial number on the bottom of the, uh, or on the barrel of the lens, it is one of the multi-coated ones. So try to look for a lens with it on the barrel here. Um, and then if you're looking for the 28 mil, there's a bit of a, a universal problem with the 28 mil where it had a coating defect and now it has a white sort of uh, hazy, foggy sort of looking thing on the front lens. Um, because it was an actual defect, people were able to send them back for recall and get them cleaned by Minolta and fixed. Um, so there are some good copies of it out there. Um, and they still can be cleaned, some people clean them. Um, I'm not sure if they don't do it correctly, if it'll affect the coatings or whatever, but some people are able to clean them. So when you're looking, uh, 28 mils for a very clean, sort of no uh, problems with the coating on the front element, you're probably gonna be looking about a thousand Australian, maybe a little bit more. Um, or if you've got one there that has the coating problems, it'll probably be about $600. Um, so for me, I thought, well, I'd rather get the Ultron. It's cheaper, it's a bit faster, lets a bit more light in, um, and I don't have to deal with those um, coding issues. Um, and the other thing is the 28mm seems to have a very heavy vignette as well, um, a little bit more prevalent than this, but once you stop it down again, it becomes really nice. Um, for me, I don't really mind a bit of a vignette. It's, it doesn't bother me at all, but if you want really clinical, sort of nice shots, then maybe, um, that comes into play um, and now whether it's worth getting the CLE over the CL um, the CLE has a better sort of light meter it's, I think it's a bit more accurate and I've heard a lot of the CLs it's a little bit more difficult to get them with working light meters this has the slightly longer base length for the rangefinder so it is a little bit better with focusing and from what I've heard the rangefinder or the viewfinder itself is a little bit brighter and nicer. I haven't tested, so I'm not sure. Um, and this is only the second rangefinder I've ever used. So I don't really have a gauge on whether it's really good or mediocre or how it is, but it seems pretty nice. It's um, pretty accurate, pretty clean, nice to work with. But yeah, and then this just has a few other features, um, has self timer, has the aperture priority, the compensation. Um, it loads a lot nicer with the CL. You sort of take the whole back and the bottom off with this, it's just pops the back door open. So I would say for the couple of hundred extra dollars, maybe go for the CLE, just seems a little bit better, a little bit more modern. Um, but yeah, that's up to you, it depends what you like. If you want the Leica camera, that is a way to get a Leica camera. There's no getting around that, it's a cool little camera. So the CLE also has a few more accessories um, that go with it. One of the things that came with mine, which I actually really like, 
is this little grip which goes on the side here. Um, came with a little wrist strap as well. Uh, really nice if you're just walking around with the camera and you want something to hold on to. Um, but for now, I've got the strap on there which I just sling over my shoulder when I'm going for walks. So that's really nice. Um, also the flash, it comes with a TTL um, little flash on here, similar to what you get on a Contax or something like that, the little boxy ones, fits really nice. You can just, the switches are all on the side where you can get them easily. Um, cool little addition. Um, I haven't got one yet, but I probably will buy one eventually after a little while. So overall, if you're looking for a rangefinder camera with interchangeable lenses, I think the Minolta CLE is probably one of the best options at the moment in terms of price. Um, as I said before, really good sort of bang for buck in terms of quality um, lenses that it comes with and other things like that. Um, and yeah, even the lenses, if you just want to buy them for an M-mount camera, they're really nice, really small. Um, yeah, so all in all, I think this is a really good camera. Um, I'll put up some images now that I've taken with it, um, so I hope you guys enjoy those photos. And if you found this video um, helpful, please subscribe. Um, any questions, put them down in the comments below and I'll try to answer as many as possible. And as time goes on, I'll keep looking, um, I'll keep answering questions and helping you out the more I use this camera. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.